Good people, I'm Dimitri. Ever wonder how many keyboard size types exist and why? Today we're gonna discuss each size type, why they're awesome or maybe not, so you can buy the right keyboard next. By the way, this new set you can see here, big thanks to This Is E, check him out over here. He's the good people fella. And to make this fun, every time you hear me say keyboard, you gotta do a push up. Meet the Viper VP4300, PCIe M.2, Gen 4x4 SSD from Patriot, available in one and two terabyte capacities. For all your data flow with, well, a five year warranty, of course. Uh, are we done? No, this cutting edge PCIe Gen 4x4 controller offers incredible read and write speeds and it comes with interchangeable low profile heat sinks to ensure compatibility in tight spaces. That explains this. Check out the Viper VP4300 down below. And so let's begin with a full-size chunker known as the 100% keyboard or a full-size keyboard. It has the full number pad, home cluster, F keys up top, arrow keys, and etc. The main advantage of this size to me are the options. It is by far the most popular keyboard size and probably the most sold too. It's great for data entry because of the numpad, especially for keyboards that have the numpad on the left side. There's so much variety in design. And if you're looking for that unique features, interesting designs, they generally come to full size keyboards first. This may include digital dials or detachable macro clusters, insanely high polling rates, USB and audio pass-throughs, proximity sensors for illumination, and every switch in existence you can imagine is most likely available. Also, since many full-size keyboards are not worried about being compact, many gaming keyboards have the macro columns on the left side for that additional functionality. Many also come with a wrist rest, but I have yet to stumble upon a full-size keyboard with a removable cable. So that's kind of reserved for the smaller keyboards. And also chances are your very first mechanical keyboard was full-size because of reasons, sometimes buying a smaller keyboard feels like a compromise because of the missing keys, right? And if you're worried about the gaming space, there's still hope for a properly aggressive slant with a full-size chunker so you can still manage to have enough room for your mouse to maneuver. Full-size keyboards are not for me because I never really use the numpad and prefer the much better ergonomics for typing with a smaller keyboard on my desk. Moving into the next size category, we have the strange downsize of a full-size keyboard, but with the same number of keys without the dividing spaces, making the body a little bit more compact, thus the 1800 compact classification. It offers all the same advantages of a standard full-size keyboard, but just with a slightly less chunky frame. This is the version where all the keys are in the same row, offering a very unique look, but a more common solution of the 1800 compact form factor is this type, with a lower position arrow keys and a slightly closer numpad. Personally, I don't see many reasons for this form factor to exist aside from the slightly different look that you might expect from like a full-size keyboard uh, and actually quite easy to find on Amazon. So they are pretty common. Now let's move on to my favorite category of TKL, which stands for 10 keyless, but in reality, it's more like 17 keyless. Imagine just cutting off the numpad to the right of the arrow keys, and that's your TKL keyboard, meaning you still have the dedicated F keys and the handy home cluster. Just like with full size, I would say variety is plenty in this form factor, both from the mainstream sector and lots of entry enthusiast options that focus on TKL. Many gaming brands focus on TKL sales because it's the perfect compromise between comfort and usable keys with lots of new available space for mouse movement after you properly angle the keyboard. That to me is the primary advantage of TKL over full-size keyboards. Also, not only is it great for space conscious setups, but ergonomically, it's just far superior for typing because the alphabet portion is just more centered when placed uh, at the same distance from the mouse. My only complaint with TKL is the price. Many times it's more expensive than the full-size keyboards. And if you end up getting a custom keycap set, which normally comes to cover a full-size keyboard, you end up having many unused keycaps. Moving down the list, we no longer have the names for the keyboard sizes. Instead, they are based on the percentages of a full-size 100% keyboard. So the 75% keyboards are becoming more popular, especially with the introduction of the glorious GMMK Pro. Basically, it's a more compact version of TKL with minimal spaces between the F row and the home slash arrow cluster. The bottom row on the right of the spacebar shrinks in size, and the shift key is also smaller to accommodate the up key, but the rest of the keyboard is identical for keycap swapping and such, which is why it's reserved for 
maybe the enthusiast market or the custom community since finding keycap replacements for a 75% body is a bit more challenging. Generally, it's not as common as TKL, but functionally it serves basically the same purpose of being compact without losing your F-Row, without losing the home cluster or the arrow keys, but it might not be your style visually because how close the keycaps are to each other. And that's where the 80% layout comes in, which has all the same keys and basically an identical layout as the 75% keyboard, but the function row is separated from the numbers row. So it's kind of a hybrid between a TKL and the 75 percenter. They look unique, that's for sure. And I generally found in the special colorway designs and something you might get as your like main desktop productivity keyboard if all the other sizes are a bit too generic for you. The next size down is a 65% keyboard, which is the same layout as the 75%, but without the dedicated functions row, making the keyboard even smaller depth-wise. This means the functions row is now built into the numbers row as secondary controls, usually activated with the FN key. This is the smallest keyboard I'm willing to use because it still has the dedicated arrows key plus that home cluster that is in the single column above. The main advantage here with a 65% keyboard is that it's a perfect complement for your notebook. You can travel around with this in your backpack or give you maximum space for mouse movement in an FPS environment. The main disadvantage is the activation of secondary keys like your F row, the tilde key and all your home cluster that are all one FN click away. And given this, keycap swapping for the smaller, non-standardized layouts becomes challenging as the secondary controls are not all the same. Plus the bottom row is not standardized, especially on the right of the spacebar on most models, uh, unless you find a keyboard like the ROG Falcon, which has basically a standard bottom row because of a slightly shorter spacebar. But still, if all you care about is the WAS zone for gaming, you can go even smaller into the 60% form factor. These 60% keyboards are quite popular since the keycap layout is mostly standardized across this category, meaning your colorway options are plenty. You can see the 60% interior is the same as on a full-size keyboard. Uh, and just like with the 65er, the functions row is built into your numbers row, but so are the arrow keys and the home cluster that are usually scattered throughout the keyboard and are activated as secondary functions. If you use them enough, they become easy to recognize and kind of learn, um, but it's definitely an adjustment coming from anything larger. The biggest benefit is the even smaller size of the keyboard, uh, going at a slight angle to give you that maximum mouse movement, which is awesome for FPS gaming, right? But on the other hand, I have never been comfortable using a 60% keyboard in any productivity environment since even delete key is combined with the backspace and constantly have to press FN to activate any of my F rows. And even if you put a 60% keyboard right next to a 65% keyboard, the size difference is one column of keyboard which is quite significant from a usability standpoint, which is why the 65% keyboard is the minimum I would recommend even for space saving purposes, since you gain so much additional functionality. An alternative for gaming only are gaming keypads from Razer or Logitech or others, but they serve that very specific purpose and they're generally quite expensive and with the layout that you will need to learn to be good with. Now going even smaller, we have the highly niche size of 40% keyboards. These only have the full alphabet without the arrow keys, without the functions row, and the purpose is to go as small as possible and as unique as possible as well, with the reliance on your own configuration of different layers of functionality. It's a pretty cool concept, um, and it's something that I would recommend only if you're willing to experiment. And so that is the keyboard sizes explained. If you have a preferred keyboard size, let me know in the comments. I realized that full-size keyboards are still by far the largest sales in terms of proportions to anything else that is below it, but TKL is probably going to be the gamer's favorites because it's a really good balance between compact, having all the functions still available to you, and anything smaller, uh, you kind of have to adapt, but still 65% keyboard, if you haven't tried it, it's fantastic. As long as you don't really use the functions row. Uh, and I would love to try a 40% keyboard just for typing, you know, it would like fantastic switches, build your own, that would be awesome. But yeah, I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Again, check out This Is E down below for housing me in this awesome studio. And I'll talk to you in the next video.